Okay, we can start now. Hi. Hello and good morning everyone. Thank you for coming to our Pick Into My Class Light Tech 2021 Gold Winner Edition. We actually had our Light Tech conference on the 24th until the 26th of August. So Dr. Eric and Dr. Omi uh, are amongst our Gold Award winner. Um, for uh, we will start with Dr. Umi with her project titled Developing Digital Learning Resources Framework for QS Program in UM. And then we will continue with Dr. Eric uh, with his My Brain Atlas to reinforce learning using gamification techniques in radiology. So I will pass the screen to Dr. Umi. Okay, thank you so much, uh, organizer. Okay, okay. Mm. Can you see my screen? Yes, doctor. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum once again and a very good morning to all of you. Uh, my name is Umika Sumiti Zulkifli. Uh, together with me, there are four other researchers, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Nohanim Zakaria, Surveyor Imran Arif Yahya, Surveyor Dr. Lu Xiao Chuing, and Dr. Noor Madia Aziz. Uh, we would like to say thank you to ADEC for inviting us to present our research finding on the de uh, Developing Digital Learning Resources Framework for Quantity Surveying Program in University of Malaya. So this is our presentation outline. Uh, we are going to cover on the introduction, basically uh, on the uh, background and the definitions of the digital learning resources. And then follow with the problem statement, how we derive the issues and the gaps. And we formulate the aims and objective and methodology. And the last one will be the outcome or the findings of the research. Okay, allow me to begin my presentation by giving the definitions of digital learning resources. Digital learning resources refers to digital resources that engage students in learning activities and support student learning goals, for example, like the application, software, programs, or the website. Okay, uh, when we proposed this, this title at first, we thought that uh, digital learning resources is only focused on the apps or website that provide knowledge on specific uh, area that we are looking for. However, when we go through the uh, extensive literature, it's proven that we are wrong. Uh, digital learning resources actually can be divided or classified into three categories. The first category is on the digital academic content tools, followed with the digital productivity tools and digital communication tools. For the digital academic content tools, it offers academic content resources that encourage students to learn academic content or skills, for example, like any references or any uh, resources that are uh, explaining about one particular area or one specific area in detail and they give a very deep explanation on one particular thing. Whereas for the digital productivity tools, okay, uh, it is being used to plan, document, organize and analyze the content. For example, like the word processing tools, uh, for example, like the SPSS, partial least square, structural equation modeling, PDF organizer, and many more. And for your information, uh, digital productivity tools do not contain any academic content. Okay, and the third category is the, uh, the digital communication tools. This is this tools being used to communicate, to collaborate, uh, to do the networking or uh, presentation, uh, the information to the audience and to the public. And similar like digital productivity tools, digital communication tool does not contain any academic content, for example, like text messaging, video conferencing, online uh, online meeting, and many more. Okay, and uh, now I would like to highlight about the, the current scenario that we are facing right now. Looking at the current situation that we are facing right now, uh, where global disruption caused by the coronavirus disease 2019 not only affect the health system, economy of the country, the political, the social system, but it also affected the, uh, the education system. 
So due to the, to the uncertainty of the pandemic, the educational institute need to shift to e-learning platforms and modify the course structure and curriculum. Efforts are ongoing to continue the educational mission in university level. If you notice, our top management has encouraged us to use a lot of platforms to ensure that the learning, uh, the teaching and learning process smoothly. And the sudden halt in the education mission due to this pandemic led to an intense and fast exploration and implementation of creative ways to continue delivery of educational content remotely. So previously we did not come across with Google Meet, Zoom and uh, Microsoft Teams, but now we are very familiar with those kind of apps, okay? And the educational institution in affected areas are seeking stopgap solutions to continue teaching where learning quality depends very much on the level of digital access and efficiency, not only because of the uh, because of the current situation that we are facing due to the pandemic, but on top of that, as an educator, we are also required to enhance and improve our teaching and learning strategy to be more interactive, productive, creative, and blended learning need to be adopted in order to enhance to enhance the learning and teaching of our students with the technology. Therefore, this will increase the student under, uh, understanding and the session with the student will become more interesting. So from the, uh, from the literature review, okay, we have come up several issues uh, which is related to digital, digital learning resources. But first, I would like to highlight why digital learning resources. Why we need, why digital learning resources is very important. First, because it can enhance learning experience of both lecturers and the students. Second, it saves teachers time. Third, it will enable teachers to better tailoring learning to the students. Fourth, it will aid, uh, aid in, the in the teaching uh, and tracking progress. And the last one will be, uh, it, it provides the transparency into the teaching process. And uh, the, the things that we have gathered, okay, the issues that we have gathered on the dig digital learning resources, okay, uh, uh, because of the current situation and the needs to learn on the technology, so therefore, uh, according to Leila, there is a need to shift majority of the course content to e-learning platforms and modify the course structure and curriculum. And according to Hutchinson and Woodward, 2014, uh, there is a lacking of e-learning uh, integration. So therefore, uh, it, it stopped the, the usage of the e-learning. Okay. And according to the Drain, Suyaman and Barrett, uh, the utilizing, uh, utilizing the learning resources available can significantly impact the quality of learning and student learning outcome. Gonzalez okay, concluded that by using the le learning strategy, could significantly improve the student's learning efficiency. Okay, and according to Fawaz and Kapasia, okay, students in higher learning face difficulties and experience significantly disruptions in their learning experience during online learning due to the pandemic. So therefore, after looking at all of the issues here, okay, it can be concluded that digital learning resources is very important to support the quality of education received by the students. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. So therefore, uh, we have developed our research aim, uh, uh, where we would like to develop the the digital learning resources framework for the quantity surveying program in in the University of Malaya to assist the lecturers in delivering the knowledge and to enhance students' understanding and comprehension. Okay. So uh, there are four research questions being identified in this research. The first one is what is the what is the digital learning resources adopted for the quantity surveying program in University Malaya? Second research question is, what is the challenges in adopting the digital learning resources for the quantity surveying program? And the third question is, how to overcome the challenges in adopting the, the digital learning resources? And the last uh, research question is, how to en enhance the digital learning resources for the quantity surveying program in University of Malaya. So from the research question, okay, we have formulated the research objective. Uh, and the first objective is to identify the, the digital learning resources adopted by the quantity surveying program. Second is to investigate the challenges, okay. And third objective is to establish a solution in overcoming the challenges. And the last objective is to develop a digital learning resources framework for the quantity surveying program in University of Malaya. 
So, uh, okay. Uh, so this is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the methods and the steps taken uh, uh, in completing the research. We have adopted the uh, quantitative method, whereby it involved with just five steps. Okay. The first step involved with the literature review, whereby we need to identify the the digital learning resources, and we are also required to identify the variables for the challenges and the solutions. For the second step, is it is more towards on the our program structure, whereby we need to study about the the program objective, the course learning outcome, and we need to identify the technical course subject. And from the technical course subject, we need to develop the course group. So we have divided several uh, course subject into several groups uh, to be more precise and to be more comprehensive. The third object, uh, the third step is uh, towards on the questionnaire development, whereby we develop the question. Uh, reflective with the digital learning resources and we prepare the questionnaire survey and the uh, uh, step four uh, involved with the data collection whereby we are using the google form and excel sheet and the last step is on the data analysis whereby we adopted spss spss using the descriptive statistic and okay okay so based on our literature review actually we come up with uh, several variables for the digital learning resources as we mentioned before, that uh, digital learning resources can be divided into, into three categories, which is digital academic content tools, digital productivity tools, and digital communication tools. For the, for the digital uh, academic content tools, it consists of the references and resources and online databases. Okay, And for the digital productivities, okay, there are six variables involved, uh, which is presentation and publication tools, the text processing tools, report writing tools, data analysis tools, virtual reality tools, and information organization tools. Whereas similar like digital productivity tools for the, digi for the digital communication tools, uh, there are also six variables involved, uh, uh, which is group messaging apps, email, journals or blogs, video conferencing, project management tools, and collaboration tools, okay? Okay, uh, so this is basically the program structure of quantity surveying program in University of Malaya. Currently, we have 42 subjects, okay, and out of 42 subjects, there are nine university subjects. And for the faculty subject, there are 33, uh, 33 units. And uh, for the technical subject uh, selected from this uh, 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 faculty subject is only 24. And I uh, just would like to highlight a little bit about our program, okay? Because uh, the quantity brain program in University Malaya aims to produce graduate with a professional degree in quantity survey who are to apply knowledge effectively with high awareness of culture and ethics. Uh, and at the end of the program, we expect that the graduates will be able to achieve the, the six programs education objective. First and foremost is the graduates are able to discover the relevant knowledge of quantity surveying in the construction industry. Second, the graduates are able to apply necessary technical and practical skills in the fields. Okay, And third, the graduates are able to demonstrate the ability to carry out professional responsibility towards all relevant stakeholders in the industry. Fourth, okay. The graduates are able to demonstrate the ability to communicate in a clear, reasonable and professional manner and be able to work independently or collaboratively and able to the lead and able to lead effectively and efficiently. Fifth, we are uh, the, the students or the graduates are expected or are able to identify and analyze the problem, evaluate the strategy choices able to arrive at a decision with supporting evidence and uh, give a good judgment. And lastly, we expect that the graduates are able to develop knowledge to enhance self-development and demonstrate effective and efficient managerial and uh, entrepreneurial skills. Uh, 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 so they can apply the knowledge that they have learned in quantity surveying uh, to practice later on in the industry. So uh, as a conclusion for the program structure, we have selected 24 subjects and this is followed with the structure of the questionnaire. Okay, the questionnaire being structured into four sections. The first section is on the demographic data whereby we are focusing on the gender, age, the current year and the semester of study for all of the students who involved as a respondent in this 
research. Second category is on the digital learning uh, resource, resources in the quantities way program. So therefore, we would like to know what is the frequently used and what is the most visited sites or visited or uh, databases uh, done by our students in, uh, in the digi digital learning resources. Section three is more towards on the challenges in the digital learning resources. Section four, uh, section four is on the solution to overcome the challenges in the digital learning resources. Okay, for the uh, section two, for the digital learning resources, question mainly focusing on the academic content tools, on the productivity tools, and the communication tools. Whereas for the challenges in the uh, uh, digital learning resources, we have divided into uh, four main categories, which is the techno technological infrastructure, access to the digital infrastructure, developing digital competence, and uh, the last one will be the personal interest. For the technological infrastructure, it refers to the hardware and the technical infrastructure of the connectivity. And challenges to the access to the technology technological infrastructure includes the access to the hardware, such as laptops and mobile devices uh, used in conducting online learning. Student has the limited or no access to the digital, especially those from the low income family. Okay, uh, for the second category of the challenges, it is more towards on the access to the digital infrastructure, whereby it refers to the access of the internet. Good internet access is the key to online learning where bad internet uh, connections enable the student to access the online learning, okay? And the, uh, uh, the uh, third category, okay, uh, sorry, uh, the third category is the digital competency, whereby it refers to the ability to use application for digital resources in conducting online classes. Digital competence is also defined as a guidance and skills to utilize the digital resources in conducting online learning. Lecturers and students both suffer from, sorry, okay. Okay, uh, lecturers and students both suffer from digital incompetence where they had to identify the resources uh, uh, which is decided for them and no guidance was given to use the resources and they had to figure it out on their own. Apart from that, the use of the different resources for different subjects increased the digital incompetency among the lecturers and the students. And the last one on the challenges we have covered on the uh, is uh, on the personal interest whereby uh, personal interest and intention attention in online is hard to achieve and when the other challenges are faced. Okay, and of course, when we're discussing about the challenges in the section three, it leads to the section four, whereby in the section four, we discuss on the solutions. Okay, we come up with a question related to the solutions, whereby it, it is also can be categorized into four categories. It is based on the challenges in the digital in the digital learning resources. So the first category is on the financial support from the government. Second category is on the access to the digital infrastructure. Third category is on the developing the digital competency. And the last will be on the personal interest. Okay, for the financial, sorry. For the financial support from the government, okay, it is proposed that the government to provide the financial support for digital devices or hardware to lower income fam family to cater their online learning needs, okay? And uh, for the digital infrastructure, the government is recommended to provide financial support uh, for the internet subscription for the lower income families, and moreover, uh, improving the IT infrastructure in Malaysia, especially in the rural areas, are very crucial. Because if you foresee, if you see, okay, currently when we're conducting the remote learning, uh, sometimes we face a problem with the student cannot connect, with the student cannot enter into the online meeting, they cannot, uh, they have the internet uh, uh, subscription uh, problem and so on, okay? So this is uh, to ensure the good uh, internet connectivity and electricity. The government is also use, uh, urged to provide financial support uh, for the university students to purchase essential software or programs according to the needs of their courses, okay? And not only that the government need to pay attention, but the university also uh, uh, have to play a big role in, uh, in providing the facilities, okay? So it is suggested that the, the university should provide the, the digital infrastructure in the campus area 
better internet service are crucial for the usage of the lecturers and the students to conduct their online classes and assignments using the existing digital learning resources. And the, the university is also urged to subscribe to more software for the usage of lecturers and the students. And this is uh, very important as the software provi provided in the current market are usually very expensive and have limited usage for individual uh, user account. For example, that when we um, are facing problem with the uh, appli uh, applications of the building information modeling, whereby the, the, the supplier only allows for the academic to use for certain uh, for certain number of students. If we would like to add, then we have to add more money to it, to it okay? So therefore, university is also recommended to get professional or software expert to provide free training classes for the student and lecturers to use the software. So those are the kinds of questions asked in the section four. Whereas I just would like to highlight about how we group the subject, the technical subject into nine categories and what is covered under this uh, uh, group subject, okay? For the first course group, it is focusing on the quantities and measurement, where, whereby inside this course group, there are five subjects, which is measurement of the construction work one, until the measurement of the construction work five. For the second category on the construction technology, okay, uh, there are four subjects involved, and basically focusing on the construction, construction technology subject uh, from one until four, and for the construction economy, construction economics, okay, there are two subjects involved. For the construction law and contract, uh, we have covered the construction law one, construction law two, and legal studies under this category. And there are, for the course group number five, professional practices, okay, there are two uh, subjects inside this course group. And for the construction management, there are project management one and project management two. And for the building services, there are building services one and building services two. Whereas for the IT and computer, basically it is more towards on the program elective, whereby we have IT management in the construction. And uh, the last cost group is analysis of prices and costing, whereby the, it is focusing on the data analysis and analysis of prices. So sampling and the populations. The populations uh, that been selected is 128 students, mainly focusing on the quantity surveying program, okay? involving the year one up to the year three. And according to the Quiji and Morgan 1970, the population size of 120 to 130 required sample size of 92 to 97 respondents. So in this research, our sample size is the whole population of the QS student. We take all as our sample. And response that we receive from the student around 91, uh, 91 respondents and the response rate is 71.09%. And the sample size was sufficient as the response gathered were above 30% as we mentioned by Sekaran uh, and Boogie in uh, 20, uh, 2010, Finkham 2008, Yun and Frambo in 2000, okay? So this is the information on the demography of our student whereby we have categorized it based on the gender, the current semester, the years of study and the knowledge in the digital learning resources. All right, okay. And okay, this is basically the question that being asked to our students who introduced about the, about the digital learning resources to them. So most of the students find out about the, about the digital learning resources uh, from the lecturers, friends, and the search engine. If you can see the, this ranking, okay, you can see that the highest ranking is from the lecturers. And this is followed by the friends, social media, uh, search engine and the family members, okay? And when the question on the, this is just involving the section two question whereby we ask about the digital academic content tools on the references and the resources, okay? Uh, uh, it is, uh, we found out that the, the most frequently visited website is the YouTube, UM Digital Library, followed by the UM Digital Library and followed them by the research gate, academia, and uh, Jabatan Kejiraya are the most frequently visited website for the QS program in University of Malaya. You can see the difference here, okay? If you look at, at the course group number one, which is measurement, followed by the construction and the 
uh, what the construction management they 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 are, the students like to have to to refer to the YouTube similar like the course uh, or group of SB seven and SB eight, whereas for the course group of SB three, SB four, SB five, SB six and SB nine. Uh, most of the students love to uh, refer to the research gate. I think maybe this one is because because of the nature of the subject. The above subject, uh, the above SB1 and SB2 normally involving with the schedule this subject. And uh, when we ask on the online databases, okay, uh, you can see most of the subject, most of the course group refer to the sign direct and then followed with the Springer, Emerald, Saga Genos, if, if school are the frequently visited online databases for the QS program in University of Malaya. And again, I would like to highlight that this is because of the nature of the subject because SB1 is focusing on the measurement whereby most of the students are, are, are being uh, grouped into several groups and uh, they are being uh, uh, drawings and so on and it is a studio-based subject. Okay, so therefore, uh, that, that's make a reason, I think that's make a reason why they, they are slightly different as compared to the other uh, uh, course group. And on the digital productivity tools, okay, focusing on the publication tools, whereby we ask them what kind of presentation and publication publication tools that be, that frequently being used. So most of the students would love to uh, use the PowerPoint uh, online and the Google slide okay and on top of that if you not uh, if you uh, see okay uh, and not Canva and LinkedIn uh, slide share are, are, are also popular among the students and okay on the digital productivity tools okay uh, the Google Drive uh, uh, especially on the work or text, uh, text process, processing tools okay uh, the student love to use the Microsoft Word and this is followed with the Google Drive. And again, I would like to highlight because the SB1 is the group uh, based and uh, it is a studio based subject. So therefore, most of the information or data need to be shared among the students. So uh, I think that's the reason why, why they opt for the Google Drive as the most frequently visited set for this subject. Whereas others would love to use the Microsoft Word. But I think this is the area that maybe the, the educators need to pay attention. Or it's not pay attention. Maybe need to highlight to the students that actually they can utilize the Google Drive uh, more frequently as compared to Microsoft Word and so on. Because Google Drive is slightly beautiful whereby you can share and you can amend directly uh, inside that document itself. Okay. And for the report writing tools, okay, turning in is the most frequently used report writing tools for the QS program in UN. And uh, still on the digital productivity tools, when we are focusing on the data analysis tools, okay, it was found that Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, Revit, AutoCAD, and Cypher are the frequently used spreadsheet and data analysis tool for the QS program in UM. So you can see there is a difference for the SB1. There are more towards on the Microsoft Excel, Excel sorry, Microsoft Excel. SB2 group are more towards on the Google Sheet and this is followed with the SB4, SB6 and SB7. Okay. For the Microsoft Excel, SB1, SB3, SB4, SB5, SB6 and SB9 love to use the Microsoft Excel. Whereas for the Revit, uh, this is SB8 uh, because Revit is uh, slightly focusing on the IT programs. So therefore, this program is slightly popular among the QS uh, program in the University of Malaya. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is on the digital productivity tools still on the virtual, virtual reality software. If you notice, okay, the virtual reality software is not that popular. Whereas uh, as we know, Digi uh, virtual reality software is very, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 the software is very interesting and it can improve the understanding of the students. So this is the area whereby the educators need to pay attention and uh, introduce about the virtual reality software to the students. So this is the area, the gray area that, that I think that the educators need to improve a little bit and introduce the virtual reality software, especially in the subject, for example, like the construction technology, uh, maybe in terms of the, uh, the measurement and so on. Okay. And for the information and the organization tools, okay, uh, it shows that Google Drive, Dropbox, and Pinterest are the frequently used information organization tools for the QS program. 
And on the digital, now we go to the section three on the digital communication tools on the group messaging apps, okay, uh, proven, okay, the WhatsApp and Microsoft Teams, Telegram, Google Meet and Facebook Messenger are the frequently used uh, group messaging apps, okay. So if you can see, you can have a look here. The most popular is the WhatsApp, WhatsApp, followed by the Microsoft Teams, followed by the Telegram, and then followed uh, by the Google Meet and etc. And for the digital communication tools, okay, via email, Gmail is the most popular. So, uh, uh, as compared to the Yahoo Mail, Outlook, and Siswa Mail, Siswa Mail is not that popular. Uh, so, most of the students prefer to use the Google Mail. Google Mail, sorry. And on the online journals and blogs, only one responder referred to online journals blog for the QS program in UM. And for the project management tools, only one responder used Microsoft Project for the subject SB6 as the project management tools for the QS program in UM. So this is an area that, uh, again, we need to improve because project management tools is very important uh, tools in, uh, in the construction management but yet the students are not aware about the existence of the project management tools, okay? And on the digital communication tools, okay, uh, we found that Google Hangouts, Meet, Zoom are the frequently used video conferencing and meeting apps, whereas for the collaboration tools, uh, the Google document is the most frequent used as a collaboration tools for the QS program. And this is the challenges that have been mentioned about uh, to, to you guys before under the research methodology, whereby we have categorized it into four main categories, okay? However, this is the question that being asked to the student, okay? And if you see here, okay, the lack of skills to use the apps or software being ranked number one, okay? And it is followed uh, by the surface software problems lagging due to the heavy load, okay? and lack of financial capacity for the software subscri subscriptions and then followed with the lack of guidance to use the apps or software and limited or non-availability of digital devices or hardware and then followed with the limited or non-availability of internet services. So these uh, challenges, uh, it is not, um, it is something that the government and the university need to pay attention because uh, not all people can have the uh, the internet access or not all people can afford to buy the hardware or devices that, which is related to the certain software or certain uh, uh, databases, okay? Okay, one other challenge include is inability to assess certain online resources that are not subscribed by the university. So, uh, so, uh, so this is a good information for the university because when the student listed all the online resources that they cannot assess, so maybe university should pay attention and should consider to, uh, to, to, I mean, to consider to buy that online or to, to, to what, uh, what we call it to, uh, uh, to, I mean, uh, to be part of the uh, system in the library. Okay. And this is the solutions to overcome the challenges. And the top five recommendation for the digital learning resources is university to subscribe more software for the usage of the lecturers and the students. Propose free classes for chosen software to provide guidance and improve skills. Okay, and financial support from government for purchasing software, digital, digital devices or hardware, and to improve information technology infrastructure in Malaysia. So you can see the rank of the solutions okay and we have done the sorry and we have we also asked other solution from the students whereby this is the additional solution given by the students first is to increase the level of access for students subscription subscription to online databases such as Pringle link and Taylor and franchise okay and second subscribe to more databases including the British standards so because this is this is a thing that they are normally used in their uh, in their teaching and learnings okay and the third one is to increase the usage of software in courses or make, in, make it compulsory to implement certain common software and test for student ability to use it. Fourth is on the online borrowing and returning for physical books for the, from the library. Consideration for the postage fee and book is not damaged during their delivery. And UM library should post announcement on spectrum other than UM library social media and official portal. So this is only suggestion given by the students. 
and government should improve the internet connectivity in rural areas because some of our students, uh, for example, in Sabah and Sarawak, they're having problem with the internet connectivity. So we have done the my ma uh, it's mapping, okay, to identify which solution for which uh, what for which challenges, and we have come up with this uh, table, okay. For the limited or non-availability of digital devices or hardware, so it is proposed that financial support from the government uh, to, uh, to to give, uh, to give to buy for the digi digital devices or hardware. And for the limited or non-availability of the internet services, okay, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is recommended that the financial support from the government can uh, assist in solving this issue. And to improve information technology infrastructure because certain area the infrastructure is not that good. Okay, and to provide better internet services in campus area. And the last one, government should improve the internet connectivity in the rural areas. For the lack of financial capacity for the internet subscri subscri subscriptions, okay, the students suggested that uh, uh, government should play a bit more role by giving the financial support and provide the better internet service. Whereas for the lack of financial capacity for the software subscriptions, okay, financial support from the government in purchasing software is crucial. University is to subscribe more software for the usage of the lecturer and the students and increase the level of access for the student's subscription to online databases, for example, like Springer and the Tellers and Frenchies and so on. So if you know, if you can have a look here, every single uh, uh, challenges or difficulties, so this is the suggested uh, solutions to overcome the challenges. And okay, now we have come up to the, uh, the last objective whereby we develop the digital learning resources general framework. So if you look at here, okay, so this is the overall framework that been developed for the quantity surveying program, whereby under this uh, uh, general fr framework, we have nine categories of the cost group and it leading to the di digital learning resources. And under the, this digital learning resources, we have uh, three categories of resources, started with the academic content tools, productivity tools, and digital communication tools. And for the digital academic content tools, we have, it can be divided into two references and resources and the online databases. And the, uh, the fifth column here, okay, it is the, uh, it, it, it clearly uh, is not, it's stated the most frequently visited website or apps that being used by the student. If you notice here, okay, for example, that reference, uh, and references and resources, the, the student most likely to visit the YouTube, UM Digital Library, ResearchGate, Academia, and JKR. Whereas for the online databases, they love to visit the Science Direct, Springer, Emerald, Saga Journals, and EBSCO. Whereas for the presentation, under the digital productivity tools, we have this category, and this is the uh, apps or uh, what, uh, website that the student love to visit. Whereas for the digital communications, communication tools, there are six uh, variables too, okay? And this is the information on the frequently visited uh, apps or software. And on top of that, okay, to achieve this uh, general framework, okay, of course there will be a challenges and there is a solutions to overcome the challenges. So this is a general framework for the uh, digital learning resources for the QS program. And on top of that, we have developed nine individual framework for each cost group. Okay. And for the first cost group, okay, for the quantities and measurement. So you can see this frequent, the, 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 what, um, the numbers of websites and the, the, the most frequently visited website, for example, not on YouTube, but they also love to visit the Jabatan Kejeraya website, the Board of Quantity Surveyor Malaysia website, the Royal Institution of Surveyor Malaysia, the Construction Industry Development Board Malaysia, and, uh, and so on, okay? So we have ranking it and we have put it in this individual framework for this category of quantities and measurement, right? Okay, and this is uh, for the construction technology, okay? And you can see the difference in terms of the references whereby uh, YouTube still number one, but however, it, it is followed by the UM's Digital Library, ResearchGate, Academia, and CIDB, okay? Whereas for the third cost group on the construction economy, it's a different pattern. You can have a look at a different pattern for the references and the resources, okay? 
And similar for the construction law and contract, okay, uh, uh, if you notice, okay, let's, uh, Latin Nexus is not being taken into consideration, whereas that is the most powerful uh, website uh, 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 software uh, that can be used for the construction law and contract. And for information, this is only a guidance for the educator and for the student. These apps, uh, sorry, this framework can always be improved and enhanced according to the needs of the subject. And this is the information on the professional practice group, okay? And this is information on the construction management group. And this is information on the building services, IT and computer, okay? And the last one is on the analysis of prices and the costing. Okay, if you look at here for the analysis of prices and costing, it is surprisingly that the student uh, did not visit the Jabatan Kerja Raya website because uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, I, I think this is something that the educators need to, uh, to, to highlight to the student again because JKR provide a very good avenue, a very good platform, how to uh, and, uh, and explain it in a very detailed and comprehensive on how to develop the prices for the construction material in Malaysia. And, okay, we are coming to, towards the end of the, the presentation whereby how can this digital learning resources framework assist the students, okay? This di digital learning resources framework can uh, can can uh, help the student or assist the student in identifying the appropriate resources for each of the course group stated, okay? And it also provides additional knowledge to the student that, that are unaware of the digital learning resources that can be used in each course group to assist learning. And third, okay, it can assist the student to visualize the relation of course group and the digital learning resources. And it can also assist the student to choose the appropriate digital learning resources for better context, greater sense of perspective, and largest efficiency and also productivity. And you also allow the students to grow effectively on self-directed learning skills. So this is mainly focusing on the student. And what about the lecturers or the educators, okay? So this framework actually can assist the lecturers in making decisions on the best platform to use in teaching and learning. And it can also assist the lecturer engaging more interesting activities that traditional, than traditional education. And assisting the lecturer in the process of planning the teaching weekly and designing the program structure, especially for the remote learning and open distance learning method, and assist in creating a vision on how technology can best meet the needs of learners in every subject, and provide clarity for lecturers in terms of how they can effectively embed digital technologies into their practices, and assist the lecturers to identify and plan to address their continuing professional development needs in the area of digi digital technologies, okay? And how did how this framework uh, assist the university? It can promote university readiness for new curriculum, better teaching and learning and student engagement. And the university, especially the library, can use this information to subscribe the most important databases, apps and software. And the framework will help the university to support services to better respond to identify department and lecturer professional development needs, okay? So we are coming towards the end, okay? And I would like to say thank you very much to Academic uh, Enhancement and Leadership Development Center, ADEC, for giving us the opportunity to present our findings on our research and title of Developing Digital Learning uh, Resources Framework, okay? And to the Department of Quantity Surveying, Faculty of Bill Environment, University of Malaya, the students of Quantity Surveying Department and towards our, uh, to our research assistant, Puan Maisara Mamu. With that, I would like to say thank you very much. Okay, and I open for the question and answer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Umi. Welcome. If anyone has any question, please just uh, unmute yourself. Do you have any question that uh, uh, that I can answer? Uh, I'm sorry because this one is specifically uh, focusing on the quantity surveying program, but I believe that you can use it in your own uh, program or you may, you may focus on your own subjects to develop this kind of thing so you will know what is the student weakness, what is the student strength and so on. You can also put your questions in the chat box if you want. 
Oh, the chat box. Okay. Sekejap ya. Ah, ni chat box saya. Tak nampak lah pula. Sekejap. Okay, ya. Yeah. Uh, kalau tak ada, we can proceed with Dr. Eric. Okay, thank you, organizer. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so... Um... <coughs> Hello. Hello. Can anyone hear me? Yes, I can. We can hear you clearly, okay, okay. Eric. Can you hear? Can you see my presentation as well? Tadu. No, no. Tadu. Tak ada. You can't see it. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, share my whole screen je lah. Uh, nampak tak? Ah, okay. Okay, okay. So, um, good morning everybody. Um, is in the channel. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for EDEC for inviting me um, to present my findings and my project. Um, so, uh, to be honest, I don't know what I can impart to you, but um, I will just tell you my journey and my ideology in terms of how I get to this point. How did I manage to, um, uh, you know, create a system or a tool for, a digital tool for the student in, in terms of uh, medical imaging. Lah. So that my my title be my brand Atlas uh, reinforced learning using gamification techniques in radiology. So um, a start. So uh, just a bit of disclaimer. I am not a professional when it comes to education. Uh, we I merely uh, have to do some educating, and uh, I am not trained in education. Uh, and a lot of my content are inspired from my previous degree and master's program that. If I said anything wrong, sorry. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Dr. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we Your can. Your voice is breaking. Yeah, just now you were uh, unstable, I think, the internet. But now? Uh, now it's better. I think you can turn off your video for a while. Oh, yeah, la, I will yeah. turn off my video. La. Okay. So, uh, like I say, I, I was just going to continue from here. I, 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 like I say um, I'm not a professional when it comes to education. A lot of my contents are inspired from my previous experience. Lah. Um, so, a bit of introduction. I was in 2011. Then I had my internship in PPUM uh, for two years. Then I went off to Lahada to during the Suluk invasion. That it is in 2014. You remember when the Suluk came to invade Sabah? So nobody wanted to go and do radiology there. So I went there. Uh, after that, I came back and do, did my master's in radiology um, for four years. And I'm now working in UM. Lah. So when the pandemic start, started, um, I didn't know what to do because I can't start my fellowship yet. So I decided I need to do something with myself. So I did. I uh, decided to start a Bachelor of Computer Science. Um, and that's how we get into the motion of this stuff. Uh, 
So uh, there are differences between uh, undergraduate program and postgraduate program. For undergraduate program, you need uh, more time. You have more time to learn, uh, more time for friends and family, and uh, things that you learn tend to be more theoretical than practical. Whereas in postgraduate uh, degree in medicine, and this is very specific to medicine, uh, you have to work that eight to five job uh, with on calls, and you now have to worry about money, and um, and a lot of things you learn are on the job, or even after the job you have to learn. After your uh, five pm, you have to uh, then study uh, on top of your work. So a lot of things you learn are more practical. Once you learn it, you can apply it to your work. Uh, and a lot of us uh, uh, in the postgraduate program are married with kids, so they have to worry about that as well, and they will need to produce a thesis. Um, so uh, a lot of times I will focus on this postgraduate program because that's what we uh, do now. We train a lot of master students. Uh, we do have we do, we are involved in undergraduate studies, but uh, undergraduate ha studies have uh, evolved over time already. So once we uh, nowadays we have problem based learning and whatnot, but postgraduate uh, studies has been in medicine has been uh, identical for the past you know ten years or not. So um, just a little bit of context about what we do uh, in uh, and why. Um, you know, medical education has been quite stagnant for quite some time. Uh, a lot of work actually are uh, tied in into clinical works. Okay, so for me, it's intervention work, MRI, X-ray, ultrasound, CT, memo, nuclear medicine, and we also have to do MDTs, and that's a lot of MDTs, uh, multidisciplinary uh, discipline uh, meetings. Then uh, some of us are in other specialty team for liver transplant, renal transplant stroke uh, stroke intervention and so forth and we also have to write out we have to do research we have to organize conference workshops speaks at, at events congress you know and some of us are uh, have to do society works uh, a lot of us are president of uh, you know mmc uh, mysa malaysian interventional association college of radiology and so forth and then you have sorry, umsc yeah, work yeah. and then we have hello uh, sorry uh are you changing your slides or is it still at uh, the display? Yeah, it's still here. Oh, okay, okay. No can, can you Can you see the work life? Um, it's at the disclaimer part. It's still at the disclaimer, yeah? Yeah. Disclaimer yeah. Uh, why so many problems? Okay, <laughs> hold on. Um, is it okay now? Um. Yes, we can see your Excel, your PowerPoint. Uh huh. Okay. Try changing into presentation mode again. Uh. Oh wait, dah hilang uh, dah. Let me just. <laughs> dah hilang dah. I, I hilang kan je. Okay. Cool. Ini okay. Um. Yeah. What, what do you see? Anything? Not yet. Okay, I Nothing. can see it, but macam. The bottom part ada like green, macam screen rosak. Ya ke? That's not uh -huh. the good. Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, nak buat macam mana? Turn on your camera. Turn on your camera. Content on it. Boleh, boleh nampak? Tak boleh? Screen rosak lagi? Okay, this one is okay. Okay, so at, at the grade, you, you see this, right? Uh-uh, grade, grade level. Does it work? Okay. I, I can't see anything. Okay, so, uh, so like I say... Okay, now I can see. Graduate okay, level. So like I say, it's... A, it's a lot of work for us. Um, some of us are running journal as well. And then you see this little kuchi thing called teaching. Yeah. So um, a lot of us actually neglect teaching as in we have so little time to teach because we are doing things like clinical service and a lot of our research are clinical orientated because, um, you know, we, our our major focus we are trained to 
you know, uh, clinically trained rather than educationally trained. So, um, this is what I want to uh, focus on. Uh, and this is, will be my first time going through education, kind of like milling with the study. So, in terms of learning, what do I think about it? Okay, so basically there's big, the big three question that we ask ourselves um, is what, why, and how. And a lot of time in education, uh, what is very important, and we focus a lot, a lot on what. You know, what is the endocrine structure? What is the, you know, blood pressure? What, and what, what, what? And um, why is also important, but uh, we focus less on this. But actually, um, to have a good education, we need to focus on why and how. And not to say that what is not important. Without what, we cannot ask why, we cannot ask how. Uh, but just focusing on what drains a lot of time out of um, the teaching session. So uh, is there a way to then mitigate this problem uh, in terms of letting the student uh, learn themselves in terms of what, and then we teach them the why and the how. Okay, so uh, where did I get my inspiration from? Okay, so in terms of Bachelor of Computer Science, I've joined a year ago. Uh, they have a module called uh, Introduction to Programming. So this is a paper written by their Department of Computer, University of London, which is the university I am a student of right now. And they have uh, 1,200 active students at any given time, uh, whether it's off campus or on campus. So uh, they came up with a programming environment for testing gamification. They call it a SLUT. SLUT means um, an investigation, it's an investigation game, and it teaches you programming. And so how does it work? It's very, very interesting. Uh, I was very impressed by this because programming itself is actually a very, very dry uh, subject, just like medicine. Medicine, also a very dry subject that needs you to learn the what 90% uh, of the time before you can ask how and why, right? So uh, it is actually, it says the worst performing subject in, re in regards to undergraduate and non-continuation in UK. So for, for that subject, it was quite bad for them. So they, they have to come up with an interesting way to teach the student uh, how to program. So they come up with this uh, private detective agency game uh, it, and the divide problem set into, um, you know, case file. And, and you will go into, you will click into this case file and, and you will have to solve the problem. So it, the example of it will be like this. You say um, you are trying to find this woman. So you, your job is to draw, um, you know, a rectangular shape over the woman uh, in question. So you will go into the, you will download the file and you will start uh, typing away your programming um, language in your programming language and you submit it and they'll give you a feedback. Uh, and this feedback will be uh, telling you what you did correct and what you did wrong. Okay, and how would you improve? Uh, and they'll give you a percentage. So this, this constitute 50% of the uh, final mark for your module. So uh, it's quite important for students to pass this. And, and because it's so I feel that it's so fun, and I finished this whole whole uh, module thing in you know uh, a week, and and the the marks are you know pretty high because there's uh, motivation to uh, complete the project. So it's really just a very darn fun event for me. And and by the end of this module, I have learned so much in terms of uh, programming in JavaScript. Um, you know, and and I I thought to myself, I said how. How can I bring this into medicine? And and for that, I I I go and meet my team. So um, just good uh, introduction to my team. Uh, they are all radiologists and physicists in my department. And uh, and being um, uh, being a very very uh, busy department, uh, you need to have a team because if not, and they have to be very supportive. So just uh, for example, Dr. Weilin, uh, Prof. Jeannie, who is in the room right now, Prof. Anusha, they have been very, very supportive and this is how we managed to bring the project up together. So uh, so what is the problem in medicine or in uh, in radiology for now? Uh, is that anatomy learned in medical education does not really translate to medical practice. So this is, for example, an atlas of human anatomy that you get in your undergraduate that you learn for, you know, five years, then you go 
then you have structures like this. Uh, but when we do medical imaging, it comes out like this. So uh, it doesn't really translate well. It looks different. And how do you uh, then translate into real practice is a problem. Okay, so um, and and there exists some very difficult word to spell in anatomical uh, in anatomy dictionary. So these are some example. And in medicine, of course, uh, spelling is very important. And how do you then uh, make sure the uh, the student practice this uh, correct spelling? Okay, so essentially, the problem is is very boring to study anatomy structures, uh, more so when it's uh, you know uh, imaging based. So how how do we? Uh, so what is the what is the um, solution out there? So basically, you can have uh, imaging atlas of human anatomy. It's a book that you can buy, uh, and then you can uh, also use an online reference. But the problem will be how would you test yourself? So you would open the book and you will say, for example, uh, the fornix for uh, supra marginal gyrus uh, like ten times, and hopefully you will remember it, and hopefully you won't get the spelling wrong when you write it down. So that that is um, not very uh, not very fun. Uh, so uh, so the solution actually we want to incorporate a module that is. Um, have some kind of feedback to the to the user, and that will be an electronic anatomical reference based on real medical image that incorporate a quiz module. And uh, hopefully we can make it fun uh, using gamification. So how do we make it happen? So basically uh, you need a, a, a different kind of skill set other than uh, medicine. So you need web development skill set, you need JavaScript language, you need data integration, uh, database integration and anatomical knowledge. So these are the tools that are used uh, to uh, design the quiz. So that will be a normal MRI you see on the left, and then we label them. Then uh, we do some scripting and what's not, and we deploy them to a platform, which is this uh, this web address that you can uh, visit, and then you can also do it. So we do login details that is uh, stored in the database, a preliminary test training question and post training score and ranking. So initially, when we when I have uh, made this module um, and I've given to my student uh, and I said there's a quiz, you know, you can take the quiz and tell you how many you get right and how many you get wrong. Uh, and then what they told me is, uh, is this in our finals? I said, uh, does this affect our our marks? You know, our marks in the uh, course? I said, no, it doesn't at all. This is independent. You can do it whatever you want. Uh, so they went through it and they said, no, it's really boring because uh, you know um, it's just quiz and what's not. So so there's a reference here uh, that you can see. Um, that you can actually turn on and off. So this is a reference. So when they work, they don't know uh, what is the label. They can go into this website and the reference. And there's also a quiz module. But that quiz module was so boring. So uh, what 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 can we? How do we elevate this boredom? Uh, what we do is uh, we introduce ranking. Yeah. So when I introduce ranking, I said, what sort of ranking should we introduce? Uh, so I thought a very, very famous reference would be Star Wars. Everybody loves Star Wars. So let's go with Star Wars. And <laughs> and it picks up immediately. So how does it work is that when you start, you st always start with a stormtrooper. So if you're a stormtrooper and you you do a pre-test and whatever score you get, you get a ranking. Uh, and that ranking you get is based on the uh, the marks you get and you get the character. And uh, this ranking will um, get shown uh, in the main ranking page. So for example, if you look at this, my name is here and I'm, I'm already Master Yoda because I've completed the whole thing. I've got 100% and, and you know, this, so there are different rankings. So people, instead of talking about how 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 boring the the test is everyone will ask what ranking do you get what do you get what character do you get or do you get han solo do you get obi-wan uh what what you know they are they're looking forward to get better characters you know so everyone can do this uh, 
uh, apps. Uh, and you can register it at the site and you get uh, you can put in your email and password and you can start in the test. So you start the stop. And this is how a test will look like. You just label and, and you will uh, they show you a label and you put in uh, the test. So this is a pre-test. It's an 85 question with 85 label. You complete it in 60 minutes. It won't tell you whether you get it right or wrong, but it will record your mistakes. So uh, once once um, you already completed, for example, so I did very badly, for example, I get 9.4% and I'm a stormtrooper because I'm, I'm my score is as low as the stormtrooper's aim. I always miss. So um, my ranking is stormtrooper. So you can now go for a training round, which will list out whatever you get wrong so you can concentrate on it. So, so you train you train your mistakes um, until you get it right. So, uh, for example, I answer the, the 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 structure. I got it wrong, and it will tell you what the correct structure is. Uh, so, when you're training, there is no time limit. You can take your own time. You can go through the list of raw anatomical structures. So, uh, then when you have completed, you get everything correct. You can do a post test. And this post test will tell you how how well you did uh, in terms of the whole training process. So once I've trained, um, you know, I didn't get everything correct, but uh, I get 95.3%. So I have become quite powerful according, you know, to the my score. And I'm now Master Yoda. So this is, um, so because of pandemic, a lot of students didn't really complete the, um, uh, exercise because they are posted to COVID board and what's not. Uh, so in terms of improvement, you can see what is the, there's a big jump in improvement. So pre-test 44%, but the end of the module, they are all at 90% and above. So it's very effective in improving user and topical knowledge for that given modality. So we address the problem statement uh, with uh, the solution where we use anatomical book, we substitute with real images, we label. For difficult spelling, we introduce a quiz module to help uh, use memory retention. And uh, for in terms of dry and boringness, uh, we just gamify it with a uh, token achievement. So, so we encourage some comparison and competition between the users. So the conclusion is uh, gamification can enhance learning dramatically by spiking interest and competition among peers. So I hope uh, everyone gets something out of this. Uh, I will take questions, but because there's not a lot of people here, and if you want to contact me, you can email me here. You want to collaborate, you want to make something, you want to apply this to your, uh, you know, to your module. You can contact me. I will teach you how. I can work with you as well uh, in terms of uh, how to do it and and uh, what how can we improve education in, in terms of uh, digitization. So that's all for me. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Ari. Yep. If anyone has any, please just unmute yourself. Okay. Mark and also shoot your questions. Yeah, you, you can also direct your question to my email or if you want to have a chat, you can contact me. I'm, I'm always very happy to, uh, you know, socialize and, um, you know, come up with new ideas. Uh, Eric? Yep. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, I do not hear. All right, okay, that's yeah. all right. Okay, so I'm sure that when you're testing out your uh, program, I mean, I'm yeah. assuming that uh, most of the MO in radiology department know about it, right? Yes, they do. Ah, they okay, do. so since they are sort of like the test subject. So, so far, okay, from your, okay, so what, from what we have done, how's the, their feedback with uh, Pernay, their Star Wars ranking or the number of people that uh, Pernay, that tried your program? Oh, okay, they, they like it. The, uh, the, the, they like it a lot. In fact, it helps them in terms of uh, anatomical module because remember our first, especially for our first year, 
the anatomical module in terms of OSCE, right, is, is very, very much related. So in terms of uh, naming anatomical structures on the, on the radiograph and uh, MRIs. So the, their request is that uh, this is quite a long module. Even for the brain itself, it's 86 structures and what's not. They want, uh, want it to be more... more uh, uh, you say more broken up so it can be co completed the turn turnaround can be faster um, and of course they want more modules in terms of they want abdominal component and other component they, they are really they like it a lot in terms of uh, um, how it can help them train um, anatomical uh, structures without without going through the books uh, but but like I said like, it's, it's quite time consuming to uh, to to come up with all these uh, things. Uh, so far, the the test point has been just using the brain, but uh, the the it's quite well received. How long does it take for you to write the program for the brain? Oh, uh, uh, to write the program now that I've written it is not going to the next one is not going to take too long. Uh. The first one I it took me around one month uh, one month. Okay, thanks so far. That's it from me. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Eric. Is Tang here? Hi, hi. Can me? Yeah. yeah, hi, Tang. Yeah, yeah, I wonder. Yes. Uh, uh, do we need to learn all those uh, bioinformatic programming in order to develop this uh, gamified model? Uh, okay. Um, the the short answer is uh, not really. Uh, they they are you, you have to learn a, a little bit lah. Basically, uh, um, but to develop, I mean, you don't have to take a bachelor of science. But if you want to develop this yourself, you do need to learn it. I see. I see. Do you do you think yeah. this? Are uh, from which which uh, faculty? I'm from uh, microbiology division. Microbiology, right, right. Yeah. Do you think I think models? microbiology will, will benefit a lot actually? <laughs> I'm microbiology from faculty science. Can you hear me? Hello. I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Good. Do you think this model can be applied to uh, microbiology subject? Yes, absolutely, Especially absolutely. Gaming. You have any suggestion? Yes, yes I do. Uh, why don't uh, you, you, you take down my email uh, and then we'll have a chat. We okay, have a okay. drink over it and I'll, I'll give you some suggestions and, and how, how we can apply it. Mm -hmm. Can you share your email in the chat? Yep, I, I, I put my email in already. Okay. Thanks. No more questions from me. We talk yep. via email, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to you soon, yeah. Ah, uh, Eric, Adura again. Ah, uh, okay. Yep, so, yep. For the program, do you know, is there any sort of already commercially or free software available that we can do things like this that for example like even now to do website that's that free uh website template right uh for is it Wix or what, whatever that is uh something like that so is there such website mm -hmm. available that we can sort of try out to do this kind this kind of like gamification programs uh? uh okay so uh, you're asking is there any existing is it existing website yes so like let's say we have a but that uh, offer gamification in terms of uh, learning for anatomy uh, uh whatever like anatomy or whatever so let's say uh, i have a like uh, a course that i want to turn it into like such a uh, uh such content gamification content so is there mm -hmm. a uh, available website uh, that we can just like put oh, it uh, 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 that it. helps you build it is it yes uh no unfortunately no 
because because you have to understand uh digital content learning is a very tailored mac uh, made um tools so um it's even for web building it's very generalized so it, they can help you build but for for digital content is very uh, is a bit different especially if you want to have different mechanics in terms of gamification Okay, thanks. Hmm. Kena cari uh, sendiri orang yang kena buat. Unfortunately, this is how it is. Uh, anyone has any more questions? Um, Dr. Tang asked if you could share the link of the website to learn the, the programming. Okay. Uh, yeah, to learn, she wants to, uh, the website to learn the program, but I'm, I'm, I learned this uh, by taking a degree in computer science. So um, there are other uh, websites that I can recommend uh but um like i said maybe you contact me and then uh we 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 talk about it because there are many uh sites that you can learn the necessary skill um but uh it it has to be tailor made to what you want to do uh and can you uh put down your email because you cannot see any in the chat box are not Dalam chat box. Kat, kat meeting chat tu, I, I dah letak lah. Okay. Um, and then somehow I can't open the chat box. Oh really? Uh, um, maybe just share lah okay. tu, you punya email tu, share your email. I, I, I share my screen lah, letak besar-besar, your screenshot lah. <laughs> boleh, boleh. <laughs> I, I've been replying in the chat box. Nampak tak? Nampak? Tak ada pun. Can I you share? Chat box. Doctor. Tak nampak? I think Dr. Adura cannot open the chat box because you're using a guest account. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, there we can uh, reply ke apa? Okay. So if I, I, share, I share my screen, I share Okay, okay my screen you nampak saya punya email. Ah nampak. Nampak email. Ha ambil email tu. Ni kejap hilang. Take down the email then email me email me. I put Ah tu ada. Baru ada. Oh I think it was your connection. Oh ada ya? Ah baru masuk. Oh, okay. Okay. So, does anyone have any more questions? We can end the session here. Thank you so much again to Dr. Umi and Dr. Eric for the very great um sharing session thank you thank you for your invitation okay i thank hope you. i hope everyone did learn something from the sharing before we end our session can we have a quick photo, uh, group photo photo okay Okay, Jack. Give me a 
Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay, done. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Oh, just to inform, we are having another uh, light tech book winner ed edition on the 28. Do come and support us. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye.